Hello and welcome to the University of Connecticut. My name is Shannon DeGroff. And my name is Chris Morosky. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video titled Intermediate Suturing and Knot Tying Skills for the Gynecologist. Once you have mastered the basic surgical skills of suturing and knot tying, it's time to become familiar with the more intermediate skills required to become a proficient gynecologic surgeon. The goals of this video are as follows. Review various transfixation stitches, illustrate the use of a tie in a passer, and demonstrate various techniques for cuff closure at the time of abdominal or vaginal hysterectomy. Transfixation stitches allow a small part of the suture to be placed in the pedicle to be tied down. This can prevent the suture ligature from falling off the pedicle. In a simple transfixation stitch, the suture passes once through the front end of the pedicle. For the simple transfixation stitch, the suture is placed at the front of the clamp. It is then removed, and the tails are brought around behind the back of the clamp so that the knot can be tied down at the back of the pedicle. Once the knot is tied down, the clamp is removed. In a Haney stitch, the suture passes through both the front end and middle of the pedicle and is tied down around the front and back of the pedicle. In the Haney stitch, the suture is again first placed at the tip of the clamp at the front of the pedicle. The suture is then removed and brought around behind the back of the clamp. The suture is again placed through the middle of the pedicle, under the clamp. It is taken all the way through, and the ends of the suture are brought around behind the back of the clamp. The knot is tied down at the back of the pedicle, and as the knot is tied down, the clamp is removed. In a fore and aft stitch, the suture passes through the middle of the pedicle and is tied down around the front and back of the pedicle. In the fore and aft stitch, the suture is placed through the middle of the pedicle underneath the clamp. It is then removed and brought around the front of the pedicle. The other tail is brought around the front of the pedicle in the opposite direction. The two tails are then tied behind the clamp at the back of the pedicle. And once the knot is tied down securely, the clamp is removed. A tie and a passer is often used to tie off a pedicle that is being held completely across by a clamp. Many times this is used to ligate the vascular portion of a pedicle with a flash of the clamp prior to placing a transfixation stitch through the pedicle. Here the clamp holding the sutures pass from one surgeon's hand to the other. The suture is then brought around the tip of the clamp holding the pedicle. A knot is tied and it is securely placed down on the pedicle and then the clamp is removed. In this version, the surgeon brings a tie and the passer around their own hand in the clamp holding the pedicle. They then securely tie a knot and push it down on the pedicle, and the clamp holding the pedicle is then removed. A Richardson stitch can be used at the time of abdominal hysterectomy when closing the cuff after amputation of the uterus and cervix. This stitch incorporates a part of the uterosacral ligament into the cuff and provides additional hemostasis to the lateral edges of the cuff. Here a right Richardson angle stitch is applied by suturing first through the anterior portion of the vagina, going through the peritonealized surface through the vaginal epithelium, and then through the posterior vaginal epithelium all the way through the posterior cuff's peritonealized surface. The stitch is then removed and a backhand stitch is placed. This will go through the cardinal ligament, once removed the stitch will be tied down and the clamp will then be removed. Here the left Richardson angle stitch is applied by suturing through the anterior and posterior portions of the vagina, the uterus sacral ligament, and then tying the knot down while removing the clamp holding the uterus sacral ligaments. Placement of a running whip stitch can prevent cuff hematoma formation. After the whip stitch is in place, the cuff can be closed with interrupted figure of eight stitches. The running whip stitch is first begun by taking a bite through the anterior portion of the vagina. This stitch is then tied down. The short end of the suture is then cut, and the long end of the suture is then used to perform a running whip stitch. This is done by grasping the anterior portion of the vagina and placing the stitch from the peritonealized surface through the vaginal epithelium. 
This suture is then run in a similar fashion without locking and this seals off the peritoneal surface and the vaginal epithelium, tying off any vessels that might bleed from this area. Once the other angle is reached, the suture is then tied down and then cut. A similar procedure can be repeated for the posterior aspect of the cuff, again with a running non-lock stitch and tying down at both angles and cutting the suture free. The vagina is then closed using interrupted figure of eight sutures. A bite is taken through the anterior and posterior portion of the vagina. And another bite in the same direction is then placed. This eventually is then tied down and this closes the anterior and posterior portions of the vagina. These sutures can be held or cut. This process is repeated several more times until the entire cuff is closed. Haney stitches can be placed at the time of vaginal hysterectomy to prevent cuff hematoma formation. The greater Haney stitch closes the anterior portion of the cuff. In the greater Haney stitch, a midline bite is taken through the vaginal epithelium to the peritoneum. A skimmy bite is taken through the peritoneum alone and then a backhand stitch is then placed from the peritoneum through to the anterior vaginal epithelium. One final skimming suture is taken through the vaginal epithelium alone towards the midline and the original bite. The two ends of the suture will next then be tied down and this will allow for any bleeding vessels in this area to be tied off. The lesser Haney stitch provides additional hemostasis to the lateral aspects of the cuff. A whip stitch, which is not shown, can provide additional hemostasis to the posterior portion of the cuff. In the lesser Haney stitch, a bite is taken through the vaginal epithelium and through the peritoneum. A backhand stitch through the peritoneum goes out through the vaginal epithelium. This suture is then tied down and this ties off any bleeding vessels in this area. A McCall's coldoplasty incorporates the cut ends of the uterosacral ligaments into the vaginal cuff and obliterates a portion of the posterior cul-de-sac to prevent enterocele formation. For the McCall's coldoplasty, first a bite is taken through the vaginal epithelium through the peritoneum in the midline. Next, a skimming bite is taken through the peritoneum alone towards the left uterosacral ligament. Once this stitch is removed, the next bite will go through the cut end of the left uterosacral ligament. Next, a series of reefing, skimming bites will be run across the peritoneum overlying the rectum towards the right uterosacral ligament. Here, a stitch is placed through the cut end of the right uterosacral ligament. Once this is removed, a final skimming bite will be taken through the peritoneum of the rectum back towards the midline. and one final stitch will be placed all the way through the peritoneum to the vaginal epithelium back in the middle. After the vaginal cuff is closed, this stitch is tied down and all of these tissues will be brought together in the midline, obliterating the cul-de-sac. Well, that's basically it. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few new tricks along the way. With a little practice, you should feel more comfortable using these intermediate skills during your open and vaginal gynecologic surgery. Good luck and have fun. Bye-bye.